Greetings, my dear friends. Sending out my love here from Florida to all my old friends, especially those close to Peter Fixtall, Jim Fixtall, and wife Barb Fixtall. Kyle Samuels, Peter's loving wife, Lucia. Peter and my best mutual friend from way back, David Banta. We loved Peter, we remember Peter, we'll never forget him, and, and many, many other people, people we've forgotten all about. Uh, experienced Peter over the years in New Caledonia and heaven knows where and also remember him fondly I'm sure. When I was 14 uh, I started hanging around with Dave Banta and we had a real musical bond it seemed. Somehow we understood where we were coming from and Dave said I got this other guy that I'm really tight with and I could really see right away that he was, David was even tighter with this guy, Peter, than, uh, than he was with me. And I thought that was pretty tight. And of course, I loved Peter immediately and also thought he was brilliant. And so basically we had a band from that point on, it seemed to me. And I was happy to play bass guitar for, the, for those fellows, either one of them let them do their things on guitar, even though I was still dabbling with guitar in those days. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to do some of everything, just like I still do. Now, Peter played completely differently from David, and yet there was a compatibility about our approaches or our attitudes or something, and we stimulated each other. At least that's how I felt. Peter sometimes was slow to contribute solos when he was playing in our band. And I think it was because Dave's personality was so dominant. But when Peter would, would contribute a solo, you could tell that there was so much pent up intelligence and thinking and feeling there was all kinds of stuff in there. And so he'd come out with about a minute or two <clears throat> of just something brilliant. And so I remember him for that. And I've made a lot of recordings with different people, but I'm one of the recordings I'm proudest of is the recording I, I didn't play on at all. I just happened to have my crappy little cassette player one night when Dave and I came over to the fixed all house to, to visit Pete. And uh, Pete somehow had just prepared two of his compositions ready to be recorded by someone. And so I recorded them. And to this day, that seems like the best recordings that we have of Pete. I'm really proud that I just happened to have had that on me and had the presence of mind to make the recording and to keep it all these years. Because of course I knew right away that I would want to keep it all these years. And I knew that when they invented digital technology that I would transfer my crappy little cassette tape to it. You know, I loved Pete as a person and I, and I know he loved me. Uh, sometimes he would just call me out of the blue when we hadn't talked for a couple of years or something. And he was just so full of warmth and, and joy and kind of boyish excitement about the music, just like we had always had when we were boys. About six years ago, I got hit by a car while crossing the street and ended up in a hospital. And I was in this rehab center in Alameda, California. And 
the re recreational director had found out I could sing and play ukulele and loved Hawaiian music. And he just happened to have a ukulele and let me borrow it. And it was a good ukulele and it was a lot like mine. And, and so every hour of the day or night, you know, when you're in a hospital, you're sleeping odd hours and eating odd hours, getting woke up from a nap because they've got the meal at that particular time and stuff. And so I was up at odd hours. One night, I'm playing my ukulele. It's two in the morning. I had the room to myself. There was one older fellow who was dying and uh, he was mostly just on his, I think, heroin or methadone, you know, while he was, so it was almost like I was alone. I don't think I was bothering the old fella who was mostly asleep. But about two in the morning, my phone rang and it was Pete. And I was wide awake, of course, it was because I had slept during the day. <laughs> Peter called and we talked for more than an hour. I think we might have talked for an hour and a half. He called at two in the morning and he was completely lucid. He wasn't messed up on drugs or or didn't sound like he had been drinking or anything. We were both totally lucid and just had the most wonderful conversation. It was really the highlight of my two weeks in that rehab center. And, uh, and then finally, my last visit with Pete on July 4th, 2016. Here's another friend I need to mention, Steve Prudell, who also loved Pete very much and conspired to uh, talk me into going up to Oroville to hang out at his daughter's place for a while with him. And part of the reason was because Oroville was a shooting distance for us to make a drive to Peter's place. But we no longer had a working phone number or anything to know. And so we had to drive, you know, maybe it was a 45 minute drive or something. It seemed like just in case he was home and, and he was home and we had a wonderful time. And, and I recorded him playing a little bit more that day. That was July 4th, 2016. So. That's the last, last time I saw Peter, although I, I did speak with him a few times. God bless all of you folks, and I hope I've touched one or two with some of my re recollections. I really love this guy, and I'm really heartbroken because for, for the last five, six, seven years, that's been one of the most dearest things to my heart is the idea that we could just for a weekend, get our band, our four-piece band together. Joe Caplow, David Banna, me and Peter Fixtoff. Just to rehearse some tunes, record them, video it maybe, and just we'll have that forever. Love you guys. Miss you, Pete. Wonderful musician, maybe even better person. I'm still living, but Peter's gone. I mean, that's that's just the just the way life is. It's not fair. Anyway, farewell. I'll talk to you again sometime. I hope this video isn't too big a file for me to manage to upload back to my computer so I can send it to you guys. Aloha, Peter Fixdall.